Hey you all, my name is Catherine. I'm an AmeriCorps member serving with the Environmental Education Leadership Corps here in Winchester, Kentucky. Today we are at the Winchester Traveling Trail and we are going to be taking a look at this beautiful chinkapin oak that we have back here, um, also known as Quercus muhlenbergii. Um, so I do hope that you join us. We're going to be talking about some of its characteristics, uh, its resiliency, and also the role that it's played in our history here. So I hope you join us. One of the things that we can talk about with chinkapin oak are its physical characteristics. So understanding the physical characteristics of a tree um, can be really important in IDing it and differentiating it from other trees. So the chinkapin oak um, actually can be confused for a couple other oaks, right? So uh, its bark, for example, we can start with that, a lot of the time is confused with the white oak. Um, they both have this kind of white, grayish color to it. Some of the differences though that are going to help you differentiate it is the chinkapin oak has um, a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. It also is flakier and these ridges that you're going to see in it um, are a little bit more shallow than a white oak. The other thing that we can look at are its leaves. So I found this leaf on the ground so we didn't have to take it from the tree. Um, and these leaves, one, don't really look like an oak leaf. A lot of the time it's confused for chestnut leaves or chestnut oak leaves. Um, and some of the ways that we're going to be able to tell the difference between this versus a chestnut oak are its teeth, right? So the leaf is a simple leaf with these teeth, these jagged teeth on the side. But a chestnut oak is going to have a more rounded tooth on it, on those teeth. Um, other characteristics of the leaf are it's darker on the bottom, light on the back, um, and also with those jagged teeth, it does not have bristles at the end, which is something you'll see on some leaves. Those are some of the physical characteristics that are going to help you identify it compared to these other oaks that we see. Um, another characteristic about this plant is um, its acorns. So its acorns are very unique in the fact that it is um, one of the smaller ones of oak acorns. It also is one of the sweetest. And so it has a sweeter taste to it because it doesn't have tannins, as many tannins in it. Tannins are going to make it bitter. And because it's so sweet, um, it is really sought after by a lot of different animals. So we see deer eating it, turkeys, other animals. Um, Chipmunks, uh, we'll see a lot of these animals also store these acorns over winter, um, so they have a food source over the winter time. Um, chinkapins also can grow up to 60 to 80 feet tall, and they're really resilient in um, the conditions that they can grow and thrive in. So they can handle drought really well and drier soils. Um, and this resiliency and adaptation that allows them to handle different conditions um, also allows them to grow for a really long time. So these trees can grow up to 400 years old. This one in particular, we don't know the exact age on, but um, we do know it is pre-Civil War, so that means it's at least 160 years old. Um, probably older than that, hopefully older than that, it's a good one. Um, and hopefully we get to see it keep growing for years and years and years. Um, other fun fact about the chinkapin is they grow really sporadically, right? So as we see with this one, it's the only one that we see for a while. You know, we only see this one chinkapin at the traveling trail. And so a lot of the time, they, you're not gonna see this tree growing in clusters as you do some other trees. One of the other things that we can talk about with the chinkapin oak is the role that it has played throughout history. One of the things that we can start with is thinking about its name. Um, chinkapin originated from the word chinkamin, which is the Algonquin word for chestnut. And so the Algonquin people lived on this land and resided on this land before European settlers came. And when those settlers came, they adopted a lot of Algonquin words. So words like hickory, woodchuck, um, Massachusetts. These are all words that um, derive from the Algonquin language that we still use today. Other interesting things about this tree 
is its medicinal and edible uses throughout history. So medicinally, Native Americans would use the bark uh, because it has astringent and antiemetic properties. Astringent properties are going to constrict body tissue. Um, so for example, if you needed to constrict bleeding and stop bleeding, um, something that has astringent properties can help you with that. Antiemetic is going to help with nausea and vomiting um, and stopping that from happening. So those are some of the medicinal uses. Edible, um, the acorns can actually be harvested and roasted and ground as a coffee alternative. Another thing that I think is really interesting to note um, with the history of this tree and our history um, is it was super essential in fueling a lot of steamships that were going um, on the Ohio River and it also has been used for fencing and railroad ties in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. Thank you all for joining me today as we learn and discuss the Chinkapin Oak. If you have more curiosity about this tree, I really encourage you to visit the Winchester Traveling Trail um, and see it for yourself. It's really beautiful and it's a really great area to explore. Also, please stay tuned for other environmental education videos that we will have coming to you soon.